Well, this is totally not dancing, and you're listening to the Shred Shack. Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcoming you to episode 112 of the Shred Shack Podcast, your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal, airing bi-weekly on iTunes, Mixcloud, and Google Play, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Shred Shack and youtube.com slash Templum. Let's get started with some old business. And I gotta press the old business button. I gotta find it. Old business is old business, and new business is new business. I need to get a new uh, button program. Uh, but we have no old business, so let's go on to new business. And this is new business, and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. Now, immediately, um, we can cut out obituaries. No. No? I'm looking it up right now. There uh, is an ob- Killed me. I know. The thing is, this one is a, a little bit of a shock because if I if I can find the article, all right. Unfortunately, don't we usually talk about new album new album releases? You're right. But First, let's just go to obituaries and get it out of the now way. Now that we're here, it's yeah. okay, and then we had this slide. Um, but the front man for Tenger Calvary passed away. Isn't he like the main guy? Yes, his name was Nature Gang Ganganabalo. Ah, that's just terrible. Um, but apparently, he was kind of like missing for like a, a couple of days from the band. They were had rehearsals coming up. Uh, they were supposed to do a video shoot. They had a video shoot scheduled that he missed, um, and they just uh, found him uh, dead wow. in Austin. Oh, that's... No, wait, not in Austin, I'm sorry. There really wasn't much details about his passing, let's just say that. And they don't yeah. even give his age, like how old he was. But I mean I'm I'm guessing he was relatively young. Yeah. You know, I don't think that I don't think they're old guys running around doing their, no. what they're doing. But uh, yeah. It's just a damn shame that he suddenly passed away like that. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, down to start. <laughs> yeah. So with new business, we start talking about <laughs> new album releases. We usually start. <laughs> uh, usually, uh, usually we don't start on, on downer notes, but let's let's try to pick it back up, um, and we start talking about new album releases. And you have one. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, it was like last week, I think it was, or two weeks ago. I think it was last week. Uh, anyway, uh, Baroness released their new album, Golden Gray. Now, on the last podcast, we started our new segment called Things I Want or Shit I Want. Shit I Want. Shit I Want. And I made a nice little rant about I want long albums. I want lots of tracks. I want musical interludes. I want all this shit. And this album delivers every last one of them. Mm -hmm. It's over an hour long. It's 17 tracks. Um, There's like four or five musical interludes between tracks that are like a couple minutes long. Um, there's a couple instrumental tracks on this. The, the the dynamics of the album are just fantastic. It ebbs and flows and just takes you on this musical auditory journey. And it's Baroness, and they're really, they're fucking brilliant at this point. They're so good. So I highly, highly recommend people going out to pick up Golden Grey, even if it's just for the album cover all alone. Because mm. it's, um, the the front man John does all their album cover work and it's amazing stuff. So I highly highly recommend it for everything involved. All right. What else have we been listening to? Well, let's check out the albums of the day, which you can now find on our Instagram. Yes, yes, uh, which... and and it's linked up to our Facebook page as well. Yeah, actually, uh, one of them one of them you missed. I. For some reason, nothing was sharing from Instagram to Facebook that day, even on my personal one. Yeah, I was gonna say the the kill, the kill switch one didn't yeah. show up. Yeah, that did not that did not go over well, which is fine because then we got I got like one guy on our Twitter account saying, "Man, you listen to the shitty one." I'm like, okay, 
<laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so starting off the week, I list, uh, two weeks ago, I listened to the Dizzy Mystics, and they have a new album out called Wanderlust, or Lost, Wander Lost. Um, I believe they are going to be covered in our next S5, by mm-hmm. the way. Then, of course, um, Golden Grey from Baroness. Periphery 4, Hail Stan. Final Coil, who was uh, previously uh, featured on one of our S5 episodes. Yeah, they were they were very appreciative of that Yes, one. they were. Yes, they were. They, they dug that a lot. And the fact of the matter is that the album is fantastic. I highly recommend everyone checking that out. And that's uh, the Final Coil. And the album is called The World We Left Behind for Others. And I just went back and listened to some of the stuff from uh, 2019, including... Um, Elevati, their new album. I'm not going to even try and pronounce it. I'm just going to stop where while I'm ahead. Listen to the self tile Kill Switch Engage album, which was the last album with Howard Jones mm-hmm. before he left the band and Jesse Leach rejoined the band. And last but not least here for yesterday, I listened to two up-and-coming bands that I will probably be featuring in future S5 episodes. Uh, one band called Tessatora. And another one called Wiccan. Um, these are bands that came to us through our email account. Uh, Wiccan is kind of like uh, death metal Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty badass. Uh, that's that's how I just. Oh, that's close to how I describe uh, early Amorphous is the death metal Doors. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, and uh, Tessitura is pretty much a very, very good death like slash thrash band. Um, again, these bands will be featured in future S five episodes, so you can get you can expect to hear more of them in uh, later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are both very short records. I think they're both EPs, but all this stuff is coming. Most of the stuff is coming through our email account at this point, and yeah. it's been. It's actually really, really awesome that we get all this cool stuff. Yeah, so. we get we get a lot of stuff from our email account that is actually really good. Um, speaking of that, um, one of the albums that I was just, I was listening to uh, is an album is from a band that I'm going to feature on the S5 called Sailing Sailing to Nowhere. Um, kind of symphonic power metal, um, male female vocals. Um, Kind of, uh, you know, a par for the course, you know, and like they're they're not. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, they're not but breaking the mold, but but it's, but it's good. Yeah. Um, also, listen to a band named Six Feet Deeper. Okay. Um, they were a little bit more uh, blues heavy. Um, they, uh, we, uh, the stuff we get is not all metal. And and we like sometimes bands, just general rock bands, will send us stuff. And this one was a little bit more blues heavy. Um, the five track EP is um, a little bit more a little bit more swagger than than aggression. Um, they even cover immigrant song by nice. Led Zeppelin. Nice. Um, with female vocals, so oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, aside from that, I've been listening to a handful of Dio albums to get ready for our ten word reviews. I have to get on that. Um, trying to get into some of the ones that I am a little less familiar with. Um, well, actually, I listened to Sacred Heart just because I have it on vinyl. It's actually sitting right there uh, on my vinyl stack. Um, but I listened to um, Lock Up the Wolves, um, uh, Angry Machines, um, and Strange Highways. Those are the ones I'm least familiar with. I was going to say, I don't even know the title of those albums. This is the first I'm hearing about it. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're the middle albums before... I, I've... You, have the, you had the first four that had like the same lineup. And then came out came Lock Up the Wolves, which was the one that came out just before the uh, the, the Sabbath reunion. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And then after the Sabbath reunion, there were these two albums, Strange Highways and Angry Machines. 
and then they came out with Magica, which is, uh, I mean, spoiler alert, it's, it's my personal favorite Dio album. Um, and then, uh, the, then kind of went on from there until like 2004. Uh-huh. He, can, he didn't have that many, um, for, for, for the length of his career, he did not have that many solo albums, <laughs> which is kind of a shame. Uh, I really wish they would release something with like some, you know, some some from the vault kind of thing because he's got to have something, you know. Or somebody has something with yeah. Dio on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's I'm sure there's plenty. Um, yeah, there's more. There's 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 more. There's more to it than just a friggin' hologram. Mm-hmm. So. Um, aside from that, I've been listening to, uh, Demon Head, uh, Hellfire, Ocean Void. Um, they are kind of like, the, they were going to be on, um, on my top three for February until I axed the, the top three videos. Um, but they kind of sound like, uh, Volbeat meets, um, Black Sabbath. Ooh. Like, Ooh. like, like what? What, like, what aspects of each band? Uh, vo- vocally of of Volbeat. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of like it's kind of like if um, there's, there's a term called proto metal, and it's basically like early early metal. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps not like doomy like Black Sabbath, but it's early metal. What you would consider to be like the the prototype for right, for yeah. heavy metal, yeah, and that's what proto metal. So these guys are like proto metal with a voice like uh, like Rob Paulson, like uh, like Glenn Danzig, I think it's Michael Paulson, Michael Paulson. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Rob, but I was wrong. I could be wrong. Robert Paulson was a guy from Fight Club. Either way. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> you might be right. I could be wrong. I, I, I now uh, I'm curious though. Well, e- either way, <laughs> singer of singer of Volbeat or Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Danzig. Gotcha. Over this this old school sounding, even even their um, um, their production quality is is kind of old sounding. Um, Michael. It's Michael. Yes. Okay, so my bad. Close. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my bad. Um, and it's probably Paulson because it's P O U L S E N. Paulson. Paulson. Okay, so, so I, I'm the one who gets the pronunciation wrong for a change. For once. For once. Um, but. Uh, it's a great album, and aside from that, uh, my iPod on shuffle, um, because my iPod is actually getting full. I gotta, gotta get a new one. Yeah, you know, I was, I was thinking the same thing. Like my 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 big iPod, the one that has the most capacity, is probably is getting very close to getting full. Yeah. It, so it's... to the point where I actually have to start like picking and choosing when I want on it, which is gonna be a disaster because yeah. I have like. I'm sure you probably have the same problem. I have 24,000 songs in my iTunes. My mine is less than 10 gigs away from being filled. Wow, completely. that's in, that's incredible. And that's 160 gigabyte. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, mine too. Um, uh, this is like an old school classic one yeah, too. I mean, yep. So. Yeah, mine too. The unfortunate thing about it is that this is the this is one of this is one of three iPods. This is the one, unfortunately, that the headphones don't work in mm. so it, it's constantly in, it's it's perpetually in the 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 speaker dock that you gave me yeah um but yeah it sucks that's getting to the point where it's like that and th- then i also remember that i think they are discontinuing itunes so i don't know how we're how I, that's gonna work anymore i didn't hear about that yeah yeah i don't know how it affects like um like pc users or anything like that I, I never read the article, so I, I just heard that they are discontinuing iTunes. Like it's not going to be a thing anymore. Like they're not even they're not going to sell music and stuff. Well, it's probably gonna, everything's probably going to go through Apple Music now. Oh, Apple Music. Okay. 
So, so, so it still te- still technically exists, just as something. I, else. I just don't know if the the app itself, like the the actual iTunes app, will still work. Gotcha. You know, as long as I'm able to still upload CDs to my to my iTunes and put them on my iPod, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, as long if the version I have still works on my shitty old like 15 year old computer, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, because yeah. the other smaller iPod I have has a much smaller capacity. I can only fit like. I don't even remember how much it is. It's very small, very limited, but that's good because I keep that on rotation with like the newer stuff that I get. So yeah. new new album releases and S five stuff is usually what goes on the yeah. smaller iPod. I, I have a I have one old iPod from that Lindsay used to use uh, before she got the iPod Touch, and I call that my my work iPod because that's the one that I rotate with just stuff that I don't technically own because i don't like i don't like putting stuff that i don't own on the on the main ipod so i like to i like to put it on on my quote-unquote work ipod right because i had the 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 other one the third one which is the oldest one this that one was hooked up and synced up with my old macbook which died so the thing is it has a lot of stuff on it that i don't have backed up Mm -hmm. so if i was to put it onto another computer when you put it onto another computer resets there's a way to stop that I think you, they ask you every single time but the thing is like I still don't have all that stuff yeah. so if I was to try to update it it would erase all that stuff well there's, there's a there's an option for like like manually um, editing iPods yeah but what, what the thing is like if it, ha- if it doesn't have the source mm-hmm. it, you can't redo it like like for instance when i go to itunes Mm -hmm. all my stuff is on the external hard drive okay if i try to open up itunes and try to play a song without the external hard drive hooked up i cannot do it because the source is not there gotcha so because if i plug in this old ipod to my current itunes where i have none of that material it will reset I think there's got to be a way around that. I, so. I don't know. But that's why I have two main big iPods. Mm. Yeah. They're, they're, and also they're... because that one's hooked up to a PC, uh, a Mac. Anytime you hook up anything from that was configured to a Mac and it goes to a PC, it automatically resets all hard drives, things like that. You can't yeah. do it. Gotcha. You can't do it. Gotcha. Which gotcha. is stupid. That's why I don't like apples. Man, Apple. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to our next clip, uh, which is basically... Run! Where is that pussy cancer anyway? That's right. Uh, it's been a while since we've had to uh, announce cancer. Yeah, that is very true. This is a, a, a pretty big one here. Uh, Dave Mustaine has been diagnosed with throat cancer. Uh, he broke the news via his social media. He wrote, I've been diagnosed with throat cancer. It's clearly something to be respected and faced head on, but I faced obstacles before. I'm working closely with my doctors and we mapped out a treatment plan, which they feel has a 90% success rate. Treatment has already begun. Unfortunately, this requires that we cancel most shows this year. The 2019 mega cruise will happen and the band will be a part of it in some form. All up-to-date information will be at Megadeth.com as we get it. Megadeth will be back on the road soon. Yeah, that was a that was a surprise. Yeah, just a little Um, bit. It may. uh, I I I remember um, when Dystopia came out. People like like there was a there was a question of why he he sounded a a little bit deeper, a little bit grittier. Um, This may be something that was. Going on for I just a thought it was for, I just thought it was old age because I also I think shortly before Dystopia came out they also talked about how even live they decided to start down tuning a half step so mm. Dave can actually maintain uh, tuning mm. you know stay in tune with the songs instead of trying to sing a, a little bit higher as Metallica has been doing it for years I mean ever, I think ever since Low they've been down they've been down tuning a, a half step just for just so James can stay in tune. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that has more to do with it than that. I think mm-hmm. that has to do with old age. Oh, okay. Well, it could be something that's been, that's been going on for a while, but, but only really diagnosed and, 
addressed now. The good but, thing is that he is back to work in the studio, though. The, yeah. he, there's already clips of him back in the studio working on the new Megadeth record. Uh, and we know from previous experience with favorite frontmen having throat cancer that there is a very high success rate, that being uh, Bruce Dickinson. Bruce Dickinson, yes. All right, so let's move on to general news. All right, Glenn Danzig, Veronica. His feature film directorial debut will receive a Halloween VOD release via Cleopatra Entertainment, a division of the Los Angeles independent record label Cleopatra Records. Fathom screenings are planned in the weeks ahead in New York, San Francisco, Austin, and other markets. A Blu-ray and DVD home video release is planned by year's end. Now, the thing I hear about this movie Mm -hmm. is that this is the room of horror movies. Really? It's that bad. Like, it's inexplicably bad. Really? To the point where you have to see it. Like, it's like a train wreck. I'm trying to find my my Danzig motherfucker. uh, (laughs) But I can't seem to find it. Man. Bummer. Stupid... Fucking stupid, thing. Stupid program. This, this is fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> One of the I, best episodes of that show. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta, I, I want to re. I've been, I've been thinking a lot about Aquatine lately, and that's one of the episodes that keeps coming up in my head. So. Yeah, it's it's funny that we're talking about Aquatine Hunger Force and how and stuff, and like that seems like such an old show now. Wow. Uh-huh. But. At, at at redacted where I work, my redacted in one of the bathroom stalls. Of course, it's a men's bathroom, so there's gr- there's stall graffiti. And for some ungodly reason, in this one bathroom stall, there's meat wad and master shake <laughs> out of like fucking nowhere. <laughs> like, why is this a thing? Why is it here? It's great, but why? <laughs> Someone's just sitting there taking a shit, just just dry. <laughs> 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 and it's really good too. Like it's not like some scribble. It's like they they really nailed it. <laughs> like they took their time to, to 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 do this. It must have been like a like a fucking burrito shit or something like that, man. It's like man, I don't want to be on the line right now. Just, just... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh man, that was great. Man, fuck those boxes. <laughs> It's fucking hot out there. It's cold in here. I'm gonna stay in here a little bit. <laughs> Meatwad. Uh, oh, that's man. pretty good. Yeah, it's good. All right, Five Figure Death Punch singer Ivan Moody has announced a brand new line of CBD and non-CBD products titled Moody's Medicinals. Uh, Moody's Medicinals premieres its initial trailblazing line of innovative, high-quality products specializing in both uh, cannabis oil which is CBD, and non-CBD wellness uh, worldwide on Tuesday, June 25th, which actually just passed. Uh, but everything's available at moodymedicinals.com and at retail locations. That's um, I mean, that's, that's, I feel like that's more of a merchandising thing, but... Uh, um, yeah, you're probably right. But, but I mean, that's, that's a, a different thing. Well, it, as CBD has become a very popular thing right now. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are using it. I know um, we used it for William for a long time mm-hmm. uh, to kind of combat some of his uh, seizure um, symptoms, mm-hmm. and it worked out very well for him. Uh, but other things that people uh, use it for, like inflammation and f- focus and stuff like that, and apparently Ivan's been using it in, uh, in conjunction with his uh, work on sobriety. Mm-hmm. So he's very much into it right now. Gotcha. So. Makes sense, but still, it's 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 that's a random thing. Like of all, of all things that we've 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 heard as far as what uh, are, are being um, pushed by musicians and whatnot. Like, yeah. That's that's a that's a new one. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Mm. All right, Machine Head bassist Jared Mc. Eckern? Mac Eckern? Okay. Something like that. Uh, he, dis- he dislocated his shoulder in a mountain biking accident 
As a result, he'll be forced to wear a sling, but will not require any surgery. He is expected to fully recover in time for the launch of the band's Burn My Eyes 25th anniversary tour in October. Okay. Machine Head's just got so much going on. Right. With it, with his lineup. Yeah, Rob Flint's like, can you people just like stop leaving and hurting yourselves and just be cool? Fuckers. Ozzy Osbourne will lend his voice to the animated motion picture Trolls World Tour, which is due for release in April 2020. The sequel to DreamWorks Animation's 2016 Trolls will see the singer voicing the movie's villain, King Thrash, leader of the Rock Trolls. They're going to have, like, um, fucking captions for him? <laughs> I sure hope so. It's either that or they have to work very, very slowly. Look, his 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 um the voiceover work he did in uh, Nomeo and Juliet is very slow. Yeah, he talks very slowly. All I'm gonna say is that I want I, I want an Ozzy remix of uh, Sunshine in My Pocket. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. <laughs> but we're not up to that section yet. <laughs> Well, not to that section yet. All yeah. right, keep it, keep it in your pocket. I, I, I have keep a shit. I, I have a shit I want, but 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 this is. A, well, this put is put a... that right next to the sunshine in your pocket, and just like hold on, okay. <laughs> All right, Adrenaline Mob guitarist Mike Orlando is collaborating with Living Color vocalist Corey Glover on a new project. The as yet unnamed band is currently recording its debut album for a tentative early 2020 release. Damn, Mike Orlando. Yeah. Uh, Adrenaline Mob hasn't done anything since that bus accident a few years ago, and I think uh, they they did an album. I think no, they didn't. They oh. were on tour behind an album. Oh, I think they were on tour behind um, We the People. Yeah. So I don't think they they I don't think they recorded anything. They haven't really done anything since that bus accident. Yeah. And then I think I'm pretty sure I saw that uh, Symphony X is doing some European shows. Mm-hmm. And I think the talk is going is uh, recording very soon for them. Yeah, because they're I, I think they're due for it. Because um, their 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 cycle time is usually about four or five years. Has it been that long since Underworld? Uh, yeah, Un- Underworld has. was twenty fifteen. Oh, so, so when we first started this, that's right. It's one of the first albums yeah, we recovered. Cause, covered because that was one of the first. Few, that was one of the first shows I saw down here. Uh, because that was October 2015. Okay. And that was Symphony X and Overkill. Right on. When I got my sweet Overkill Texas t-shirt. Nice. All right, Marilyn Manson has confirmed that he has recruited Brandon Pertzborn to play drums for his namesake band. The Texas-based Pertzborn, who is apparently only 24 years old, has toured with a number of different artists over the years, including Black Flag, Doyle, Horror, uh, and the latter of which opened for Marilyn Manson last fall. Uh, explains that. Yeah, he's like, I like that guy. I'm just going to steal him. <laughs> kind of like uh, the way Alice Cooper does things. Yeah. All right. Guitarist Meryl uh, Bechtold, 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 um, anyway, has decided to leave Delane and focus on different musical ambitions. Her final performance will to the, with Delane will take place on June 23rd, or has taken place on June 23rd, at the Grass Pop Metal Meeting in uh, Dessel, Dessel? Belgium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's just leaving it. Well, hold on now. Primal Fear parted ways with drummer Francesco uh, Yovino and have replaced him with Michael Ear of Gamma Ray. Michael will join Primal Fear on the group's summer festival tour and will record the new Primal Fear album later this year. I really still need to see Primal Fear live. I, I missed my chance when they came around a few years ago to Houston. But I need to see them. I need them to come here. Or Austin. Come to Austin. Primal Fear. Primal Fear. Alright, Frank Sidoris, who plays rhythm guitar for Slash featuring Miles Kennedy, Other Conspirators, and this guy Frank, will miss the remainder of the band's European tour as he travels back to the U.S. to be with his wife, Alexandria Finley, for their first full-on, for her first full-on chemotherapy treatment in her battle with cervical cancer. Mm-hmm. Corey Churko, who plays alongside Conspirators member Todd Kearns and Brett Fitz in the cover band Torque or Tork, 
uh, will fill in for Sidoris for all conspirators' dates between June 25th at the Rock Hall Festival in Luxembourg and July 9th in Tel Aviv, Israel. Run! Where is that pussy cancer anyway? That's right. Last but not least here, according to TMZ, former Guns N' Roses drummer Steven Adler was rushed to the hospital after stabbing himself at his home. The fuck is going on? Law enforcement sources tell the site a 911 call was placed from Adler's Los Angeles residence shortly after 6.30 p.m. Thursday night, June 27th, to report that someone has sustained a self-inflicted stab wound. When cops and paramedics arrived, they discovered it was Adler who had suffered a stab wound to his stomach. He was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. If you're not leaving a band, you're stabbing yourself. Like, if you're not leaving, if you're not leaving a band, you're hurting yourself. That's basically what's going on right now. Pretty much, it seems like that. Yes. Jesus, tap dancing, Christ. <sighs> I'm glad there's nothing here for the crime blotter. <laughs> well, that's not true, actually. I God just damn it! <laughs> I just haven't, I just haven't put it in the script. Uh, oh, you're killing me! This one, it, it's it's a it's a little complicated. Oh. Uh, I'm just gonna go through the first paragraph here, and then we'll just we'll just go from there. Okay. All right. It said uh, this past week. This was an article on June 19th. This past week, Katie uh, DeSanto, who is the wife of Vector vocalist guitarist David DeSanto, alleged that her husband has engaged in a consistent pattern of violent and abusive behavior. Included with these allegations was a video of David picking up Ka uh, Katie and throwing her, uh, loudly verbally berating her and throwing a pillow at her face while she wept. What a douche. Yeah, pretty much. And what's what's what band is this guy from? Vector. It's a uh, oh, thrash metal band. Yeah. I remember like really liking them. Yeah. Up until right now. Yeah, until right now. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Uh, but. I don't know what her plans are, but she's been in. She issued a statement via her social media, um, and she spent a lot of time in courthouses and with the uh, police. Uh, apparently, she's trying to get him help. Um, you know, there might be some. I don't know if there's a like substance abuse or just mental health issues with him. Mm -hmm. uh, there doesn't seem to be anything about him about any kind of charges being pressed or, or anything like that, and. I haven't seen much of anything since this happened, but still, domestic violence, no bueno. I'm just going to not say anything. I'm not going to say, uh, you know, like, thank God there's enough for this, because apparently this is the second time that you've... Yeah, I, I've done fucked you pretty good there. <laughs> All right, so, okay, how about I do it? All right, yeah. Metallica hasn't broken anything yet. Okay, so... All right, that, Metallica that's... is just chilling. But, but we have... We have other things. We have lots of feuding. Okay. Lots of feuding here. Okay. All right, so this is a long one. Uh, we're kind of, this is kind of chronological here. All right, so okay. Man of War. All right, they canceled their appearance at Hellfest just hours before the band was supposed to take the stage. The band was scheduled to perform at the annual festival in France on Friday, June 21st, but Hellfest organizers announced that Man of War called off its appearance, they, the festival, issued the following statement. Despite a presence on site on June 20th, the teams and members of the group decided to leave the site. The Man of War concert scheduled for Friday, June 21st, will not take place for reasons beyond our will. We are sincerely sorry for all Man of War fans and more widely for all the fans attending Hellfest. Man of War responded to that initial statement on its official website, Quoting, after 18 months of tireless work and preparation, we arrived at the Hellfest site yesterday, ready to play today. The Hellfest organizers obstructed our efforts to put on the epic show we had promised. Despite that, despite what you may hear or read, the Hellfest organizers did have control over the circumstances that prevented our performance. Now, a couple of days later, this is on June 24th, okay. Manowar released Another statement via social media, all right, regarding Hellfest cancellation. Our performance at Hellfest scheduled for June 21st, 2019 was not canceled by the band. It was canceled by the Hellfest organizers in their announcement that appeared on their websites. In the days prior to Hellfest, Switzerland, Greece, and Bulgaria all witnessed our massive production that brought the Kingdom of Steel to life. 
We brought it to Hellfest because we came to play. We fought to give our fans performance we promised last year at Hellfest, but we will not be pushed around by the Hellfest promoters who chose not to honor their contractual obligations and think they can do wrong to us and to our fans. Those of you who have requested information regarding ticket refunds should contact the outlet where you purchased your ticket or the Hellfest organizers directly as they are responsible. We are currently seeking every legal remedy available to us by law. Damn. Now, some other information and some rumors that were uh, going around mm-hmm. was that Manowar um, canceled their performance because they were unhappy about, one, the size of the stage. Now, this is the same stage that was shared by bands like Kiss and Tool, mm-hmm. you know, big production bands. And they were also displeased about the allotted, allowed volume that they were to play at due to city ordinances. They weren't allowed to go loud enough for them, allegedly. I mean, they. I think they do currently hold the record for the loudest concert ever. Regardless. Yeah. These are city ordinances. Yeah. Uh, these, these are things that they are well beyond their control. Yeah. Uh, but in a show of good sport here, Sabaton was asked to perform in their place. Their singer blew out his voice the night before. But did they say no? No. Sabaton performed with their guitars doing vocals. So we have two examples of extremes here. We have a band, over pretentious, stage is too small, can't play loud enough, fuck you guys, we're not playing. Okay. The other band, our singer blew his voice out, no, nah, we're good, we'll, we'll take care of this. Asked to play the last second, we got this, no problem. Two extremes. Which one would you go with? What do you mean? I, I just like, I just think about like, I'm just thinking about the fans. Number one, people like a lot of people came to this this that particular day of the festival to watch hell to watch oh, Man of War. Like, there's a lot of fans that were online. It's like I came from this country to France to see Man of War. I feel I got screwed. All right, you have, and I, you have a band that's like, all right, we did we couldn't put on the show that we wanted to do, but we're just going to bounce and leave our fans high and dry, kind of like that. Mm-hmm. But then you have a band like Sabaton who's like, we can't, perf- we physically cannot perform the way we should perform, but you know what? We're going to do it anyway just to, 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 because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. I, I always say, like, if, if a singer is is incapable of singing, they should still go on anyway because you can have, you can... A, have somebody else do the vocals like they did, or B, have the audience sing the songs. Like the other audi- bands have done. Because the audience is going to know the songs. Yeah. If, if they're going to play, you know, that late, that late in the show. So the audience is going to know the songs. So, um, but I guess there's, is it, is the thing with Man of War true as far as? Well, the fact of the matter is, I don't know what kind of truth there is to it. I mean, there. This is the fact of the matter is that there was no physical reason for them not to play. Mm-hmm. Like no one was hurt. There was no one missing from the band. Mm-hmm. They were there on site. Mm-hmm. Why did they skip out? Gotcha. Like what happened to prevent them from 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 performing? So I guess that that one will unfold. You know, it's just a matter of like. Whether you're upset about the the conditions conditions of your of your stage or whatever, you still perform. Yeah. I mean, you, then you find out like, okay, you, you didn't meet up your to your contractual obligations to what we're supposed to do, but we're going to do our part and then take it to the next level as far as legalities go. You don't screw over your fans and just hours before the show say, nah, fuck it, we're not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. just. I don't know. It's, I, I, I think Man of War is just coming across as, as petty at this point. And the yeah. organizers are just like, uh, what do we do? So I, I, yeah. I, would, I, would side with the organi- I would side with the festival on this one. Gotcha. Okay, again, we'll, we'll see what unfolds in the, the coming days and this, this legal, all legal remedies, as they, as they have said. 
Right? All right. Anyway, let's go on. We've got a couple more feuds here. All right, the parent company of Dean Guitars has commented on a lawsuit filed by Gibson Brands Incorporated alleging trademark infringement, trademark counterfeiting, unfair competition, and trademark dilution. According to Qatar, got, uh, no. According to Qatar.com, Gibson has accused Armadillo Enterprises of infringing on seven of its trademarks, including the body shape design of the Flying V, Explorer, ES, and SG, as well as the Dove Wing headstock design, the Hummingbird name, and the Modern Trademark. Excuse me. <clears throat> The lawsuit, which was filed in a Texas court, also accuses Armadillo of trademark counterfeiting, effectively claiming that Armadillo is trying to deceive or mislead the public into thinking that the guitars made by Dean are in fact Gibsons, or have some connection to Gibson. Armadillo released the following statement, We believe that Gibson's claims are baseless and will vigorously defend ourselves. Well, that was kind of a vague statement. <laughs> It kind of reminds me of in South Park. It's like, the, what does the American ambassador have to say? Fuck Canada! <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck you, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> fuck Gibson! <laughs> That's pretty much what it comes down to. Dude. They're like, ah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're talking Fuck them! <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, though, is that, like, you know, can you really mistake any other guitar for a Gibson? I don't think so. I think I think I, I even I like I, I'm not good at telling guitars apart, but I can usually tell what Gibson. Yeah, you know? I mean, number one, they have a very signature headstock style, um, and their names all over everything. Yeah, but uh, you know, even ESP has like a, a, a body shape that has, is very similar to a Gibson Explorer or Gibson Les Paul, but they've been doing that for years. Is Gibson going to now start suing everybody who has a similar shape guitar? I mean, it's almost impossible. And so you, hopefully this doesn't set a precedent. Well, I sure as hell hope not. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it would be fucking stupid. I mean, anyone, any guitar manufacturer makes anything that resembles what a Fender is going to start fucking getting sued now? No. Yeah. Can't. No. Don't do it. Yeah. It seems stupid. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that response is great. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Canada! <laughs> hey, fuck you, buddy! <laughs> Uh, according to the blast, Chris Cornell's widow is battling with his ex-wife over his estate. All right, Vicky Cornell filed a petition to administer Chris's estate, listing herself and the Cornell family trust as sole, benef sole beneficiaries of the Soundgarden singer's last will and testament, which was signed in 2004. Vicky believes his estate is worth at least $20 million. However, Cornell's first wife, Susan Silver, and their 19-year-old daughter, Lillian, filed documents requesting a cut of the estate. Susan and Lillian claimed they are owed child support pursuant to a 2004 divorce settlement. Susan also believes she is owed a percentage of Cornell's royalties. They want accounting of the estate to determine just how much they are owed. Vicky has objected to both claims and is seeking to, dis to dismiss them. That's one of the things that, like... Uh, obviously, any sort of death is a terrible thing, but the fallout is always just so petty. Yeah. Well, at least this one is more petty, and, and we've talked a lot about the one that's surrounding uh, Ollie Herbert from All That Remains. Yeah. And the suspicious nature of this last will and testament and his suspicious death. Yeah. You know, so at least like this one is just more full-on petty and not... Like, you know, his wife fucking killed him kind of stuff, you yeah. know? But, like, like he, it's his last will and testament. He, he like, he wrote and signed it. The I, end. I know, I know. I was like, well, it's to the point where, like, you know, what what do legal documents really mean if you can contest anything? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like, ridiculous. what's the point? Yeah. 
It's it, it just it's, it's it's stupid. You know, fucking it's I. It, it's all about the money. Speaking of money. Speaking of money, according to Billboard, Soundgarden and Hole are among the artists who have filed a class action lawsuit against a mu- uh, Universal Music Group on Friday, June 21st, over a 2008 fire that reportedly destroyed up to 500,000 master recordings in the record company's archive vaults. Now, this is the backstory a little bit here. Earlier this month, a report by the New York Times revealed for the first time that recordings by many of music's biggest artists were destroyed in a fire that swept through the Hollywood, Hollywood lot of Universal Studios on June 1st, 2008. Among the recordings lost, many of which may have been on original master tapes, were songs from Nirvana, Soundgarden, Nine Inch Nails, Guns N' Roses, Beck, No Doubt, Aerosmith, R.E.M., and pretty much everything from the 90s, it sounds like. Seriously. Also lost were almost all of Buddy Holly's masters, plus classic and our early recordings from Etta James, Billy Holiday, Lily Armstrong, Al Jolson, Bing Crosby, Aretha Franklin, John Coltrane, Al Green, Ray Charles, Elton John, B.B. King, The Four Tops, Snoop Dogg, Chuck Perry, Tom Petty, Joan Baez, Neil Diamond, Cat Stevens, Gladys Knight, and The Pips, Eric Clapton, The Eagles, Rufus and Chaka Khan, Barry White, Patti LaBelle, The Police, Sting, Steve Earle, Janet Jackson, Mary J. Blige, I, they oh. already mentioned Snoop Dogg, but anyway, Sheryl Crow, Tupac Shakur, Eminem, 50 Cent, and so many more. Pretty much all of music. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know that they say the day that music died is when the, cra- the plane crash happened. This seems to be the day that the music fucking died right yeah. here. What the fuck? Yeah. That's, that's we're talking about, like, we're probably talking about, like, original master tapes of classic recordings that you can never, ever, ever, ever get back. Wow. Yeah. You done fucked up, Universal. <laughs> you done <laughs> fucked up. I think the world as a whole should just sue you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't get that shit back. No. That's, 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 that's rough. Yeah. And the fact that they they only like announced like they announced it earlier this month, right? Like, this is like eleven like eleven years later. Yeah, like, like, like nobody, what the hell? Like nobody say anything. <laughs> like how do you keep that on the wraps? I don't. I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. Like, like how do you whole... keep that secret for eleven years? That like master record. Like I guess this goes into the whole ownership thing. Like. These bands probably don't own the masters of their own music. Mm. So they have no idea what happens to it after they're done. You can know? I can only imagine what, what was lost. Right? Like. 500,000 recordings. 500,000. I guess all the, 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 the times that we sit there and say, like, oh, they got to have things in the vault. Well, they might have burned up in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they don't, it's you know? Like, what the fuck? Wow. That's, that's, Jesus. Oh, oh just look at this, uh, some of the names that I mentioned here. Like, fucking Buddy Holly. Yeah. Bing Crosby. Aretha Franklin. B.B. King. Just some of these names. You can never get this stuff back, ever. Yep, and then obviously you, there's there's no remaking it. There's no there's nothing like that. Yeah, that 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 is that is just incomprehensible. Uh, Man, that's that's a hell of a cover up. Yeah. All right. Anyway, moving on. You ready for some alcoholica? I'm ready. Slipknot has unveiled details of its very own craft spirit, number nine, Iowa Whiskey, which will be available on my birthday, August 10th, at select retailers in all 50 states, and at the band's, the band's headline Not Fest Roadshow North American Tour. Number nine, Iowa Whiskey, can be also be obtained at, at select markets on the North American Tour ahead of the August 10th official launch. 
collaboration with the Iowa-based Cedar Ridge Distillery. Number nine, Iowa Whiskey, which is a 90 proof, will retail for $39.99. And number nine, Reserve Iowa Whiskey, which is a 99 proof, will retail for $69.99. Both which are made with corn from the award-winning distillery's family farm in Winthrop, Iowa. And go to their hometown for the, uh, or not hometown, home state, home for, state the, yeah. for the corn. Yep. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. I mean, Iowa's got to be good for something else. <laughs> huh? It's corn. It's corn. And Seth Rollins. Corn. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the vegetable, not the band. Corn. <laughs> You ready for some merchandising now? I'm ready. All right. Knuckle Bonds, which is the creator of the Rock Icons Music Collectible Series, has announced the production of a set of Pantera Cowboys from Hell collectible statues available for pre-order now at their website. This is a limited edition collectible. Only 3,000 of each statue are made by hand and sold worldwide. Each statue is hand-painted and numbered and come with a certificate of authenticity printed on the base of each collectible statue. Each statue stands approximately eight and a half inches tall and is officially licensed. Fans can get the set of four statues, one each of Philip and Selma, Dimebag Daryl, Rex Brown, and Vinnie Paul for $499.99. Or order their favorite member of Pantera individually for a buck forty nine a piece. That's $149 a piece. That's a that's a pretty steep price. They're really good though. They they, they do look cool. I've seen them. But they're really the only thing that sucks is that they're limited to three thousand yeah. sets. So as soon as someone orders just one, oh, that, see ya. that that fucks up the whole set. <laughs> you, you, you dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I really just want that Rex Brown. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking of. Um... That bit from Family Guy when they were doing, um, uh, God, what was it? It's not Family Feud. It's the one that was hosted by, um, oh, God. The one, shit. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the name of the game show. Um, I got nothing for context. The, the, the one where you, you you name prices and the you, price is right. The price is right. That's the one. And, wow. And there, I have I. Come I, on down, dude. <laughs> so you think about Drew right, Carey, by the way, and Bob Barker. Bob Barker. That's okay. the one. Um, but there was a bit on Family Guy where um, they do the whole thing where where somebody bets an amount and then somebody bets a dollar over and they just sit there in silence and goes. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I know it's gonna be it's gonna be really shitty when they get down to like the last couple of orders here. It's like, yeah, we can't make complete sets anymore. We have like you know we have like only like a handful of Anselmos left, and like you know a couple of Rexes left. Sorry, buddy. I, I the thing is like I I'm I'm wondering who would really go for the single one. Well, actually. I can I can see people fans yeah fans like you know anyone who's like a fan of Dimebag Daryl is like you know doesn't really care about anything else about the band but Dimebag Daryl is my hero yeah, I want I want that's, that that's what I was thinking yeah. you know a, a drummer who's like Vinnie Paul was my musical inspiration I I really want that Vinnie Paul statue yeah but still that's that's a steep price it is it is but collectibles yeah you know there's people who are gonna pay for it. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, we ready for some recording news? Yes. We got some good stuff coming up here. We got, on September 6th, Sonata Arctica will release their 10th studio album called, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it means Winter Night, and it includes 11 new tracks. You sure you don't want to try to pronounce it? Talvigayo. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, it's, there's even an umlaut over the fucking O, okay? I don't want to fucking know it, all right? <laughs> anyway... Philip H. and Samuel's N Minor will release its debut 7 inch this August via Housecore Records. A project inadvertently in the making since N Samuel's earliest days as a child in the French Quarter, the band features Steven Taylor, who works with Philip in Superjoint, 
uh, and the Illegals. He's also in Woven Hand and 16 Horsepower. Kevin Bond, who's in Super Joint, Christ Inversion, Artemis, the Pile Driver. Jimmy Bauer, who's just awesome with I Hate God, Down, and Super Joint. Calvin and Joyner Dover. They're in a band called the Dover Brothers. And Steve Bernal, who's a former first cellist in the Temple Symphony Orchestra. That's randomly enough. Yeah. An experimental and eclectic musical endeavor that finds Ensemble exploring a softer, graver vocal style. And Minor is an honest and deliberate change of pace, delivering brooding tales of pain, regret, and sorrow, serving as the precursor to the band's full-length debut set for release later this year, and Minor's self-titled 7-inch will be released on August 2nd. Pete, get that vinyl. I, I was actually pretty pumped for this. I, I, I just really like a lot of Enselmo stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I really do enjoy a lot of his stuff. And he, he's so prolific at this point with a yeah. lot of things. Although, I really do wish he would finish that four-part EP series for Down. We're only halfway there, fucker. He's working on it. Yeah. Leave him alone. Fucker. Kill Switch Engage will release their new album, Atonement, on August 16th via Metal Blade Records in the U.S. and Sony Music Entertainment in the rest of the world. The discs... First single, Unleashed, can be streamed now. I already pre-ordered it. I'm sure you did. I did. I'm not, I have no surprises right there. Yeah. Although I pre-ordered it through Amazon, but if you pre-ordered it through their um, through their website, they have a bunch of really cool different looking bundles, mm-hmm. uh, including vinyl, um, CDs, I think there's a t-shirt involved, and a fanny pack. Because why the hell not? <laughs> you, you literally have nothing to say. <laughs> I'm reeling right now. I'm reeling. <laughs> Fanny pack. I'm reeling. All right, the new album from Borknagar, titled True North, will be released on September 27th via Century Media. The follow up to 2016's Winter Thrice was once again produced. Mix has once again been mixed and mastered by Jens Bagren at Fascination Street Studios in Sweden. We've mentioned Borknagar a couple times on the podcast by Pete. Yes, Pete's the one who followed up on them, so that would probably be something pretty cool to listen to. I know he was. I remember him being very impressed with them. Yeah. All right, Ginger have completed recording the follow up to 2019's EP Micro. Tentatively due in the fall, the disc was laid down at the. Casca Studio in Kiev with producer Max Morton, who previously worked with Ginger on Micro as well as the acclaimed albums Cloud Factory and King of Everything. Actually, um, I, I don't know if you saw, but um, in light of them, in light of the cancellation of the River City Rock Fest, they're playing the Rock Box. Oh, is that right? Yeah, nice. They're playing the Rock Box in September. Is that a headlining show, or is that? It's it's all all I see is is just them. Oh, rock box. That's pretty badass. Yeah. So. Huh. September, huh? Well, September what? September twentieth, twenty something, twenty first. Hmm. That's around vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> I already got my ticket. Well, I still owe you money for tickets for Iron Man. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. All right, Nile have completed work on their ninth studio album. The follow up to 2015's What Should Not Be Unearthed which is tentatively due in the fall, will mark the band's first release with new guitarist vocalist Brian Kingsland, who replaced Dallas Toller Wade in 2017. Right on. Cold, who is still apparently a thing, will release their sixth studio album, The Things We Can't Stop, on September 3rd via Napalm Records. Apparently can't stop cold. Apparently can't stop cold. That's right, puns. Puns for days. Big N, little Y, big fucking Q. <laughs> I recently rewatched uh, No Cure for Cancer. Uh, I, I I assumed that it was it, it's still pretty goddamn funny. Although some of it's like, man, why are you so angry? <laughs> <laughs> like, you just need to chill out. All right, last one at least here for recording news. Corn will release its new album, The Nothing, on September 13th via Roadrunner Electra. 
The follow-up to 2016's The Serenity of Suffering was once again produced by Nick Raskolinsk. <laughs> that was brilliant. Moskowitz. Moskowitz. I'm going to go with Moskowitz for everything I can't pronounce now. <laughs> the Nothing is available for pre-order now via Korn's official website. Included is a limited edition bundle that contains an autographed copy of the new album on CD or vinyl, a t-shirt, a mirrorboard lithograph print, a bag of corn coffee wired roast, and a corn coffee tumbler. That sounds fun. Right? Yeah. Like, I might buy it just for the coffee. <laughs> And and a coffee tumbler. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right, but that's it for recording. There's, again, some good stuff coming up. Yeah. Good stuff. That, that, that does sound pretty good. All right, the good that men do. Metallica, in their never-ending quest to be the most charitable metal band in existence, have donated 40,000 pounds to homeless charity Coffee for Craig. Speaking of coffee. Coffee. Nothing but coffee. This is what's in the Undertaker shaker right here. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The Undershaker here. Yeah. Undershaker. I, I, I got it. <laughs> I, 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 I got it. Puns. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Dave Navarro and Billy Morrison, who is in Billy Idol's band, have announced the second annual Above Ground Benefit Concert, set to take place Monday, September 16th at the Fonda Theater in Hollywood. As with last year's successful event, this immersive evening of art and music will celebrate the vinyl album as an art form and at the same time raise awareness and funds for the treatment of mental health with the profits being donated to Music Cares, a charity of the Recording Academy. This year, Navarro and Morrison, and an array of special guests to be announced in the coming weeks, will tip their hats to two of the greatest albums of all time, David Bowie's The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars, and The Stooges' self-titled debut album on which the world was introduced to Iggy Pop. There will be a unique stage set and production for each album's performance. So it seems like these two guys, special guests, performing these two albums in full. That's cool. Badass. That sounds pretty cool. Right? Yeah. I like it. I like it's, it a lot. It sounds pretty cool. And and the cause is good. Yes. So. Always. Right on. We have nothing for crowdfunding. Yeah. I, I actually looked at crowdfunding before uh, before you you came over and there there isn't there isn't too much going on as far as metal. I think there's like two or three things. I wonder if people would be a little bit more wary about us considering that the, the, the pledge music issue. Uh well last the the time before that there was tons tons of stuff uh, um open as far as Kickstarter goes uh -huh. I think I think we're just in a momentary slow period but um and one of them one of them I couldn't even read because it was actually written in a foreign language so, oh wow yeah I, I couldn't I couldn't even sit there and quickly put together something gotcha. So, um, so moving on to our new segment, which is shit I want. Shit I want. And I'm looking at yours, and I'm I'm like, damn, that is that is something that I want. To. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna preface this. I drive for Uber and Lyft in the mornings after I get off of work, mm -hmm. and to be safe, because I never know who's gonna get into my car. I just turned on the local pop radio station here in San Antonio, uh, 105.3. And they play the same, like, 20, 30 songs uh, over and over again, just like any other radio station, really. And they play, like, older songs by the Backstreet Boys. Okay. And the first thing that came to mind, I was listening, it was a song, um, Larger Than Life. Which Paragon has done a awesome cover of well that's what got me thinking of i want shit i want i want a new northern kings record it's it has been 11 years i want a new northern kings record but the caveat being here but they only do pop songs like they've done pop songs they also done like rock songs like and they've done like radiohead and stuff like that but i only want them to do pop songs and i'm thinking specifically that song Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also thinking about anything, anything that having to do with like multiple singers. 
So anything having to do with boy bands. So you got the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, anything like that. I think they would do a really fucking great job yeah. of of updating and and putting their own style to it. Um, After hearing some of those songs. X number of years later, they're not terrible songs. I, you know what? The th- I was thinking the same exact thing. Is like I can't say that I, I enjoy the songs. I can't say that I go out. I would go out of my way to listen to them. But I can definitely appreciate why they were so fucking popular. Yeah. I mean, you know, they are catchy. You know, they have they're they're well produced. They sound great. Yeah. Like the the, the only thing that I I still wish would burn is country music. <laughs> I, I wish that would. I because I because I, I I work um, at a another place. This, this is not redacted, um, but I work at another place, and they have the radio on all the time, and it's always on country. And I listen to it, I hear the same songs over and over, and I'm like, this is fucking trash. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's such. There was a joke by Pablo Francisco. Uh, years ago that all country music is about pancakes and sausage and I'm like you know what you're fucking right <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm one of the other things that, like, that I would like the Northern Kings to cover is like there's an Adele song out there that I think would be really great for them to cover I can't I don't know the name of it yeah. but the chorus is really good because it has her her main voice over it and then like background singers doing yeah. like a bunch of really good shit yeah and I could definitely see those guys in that band doing. I could, I could hear any of them singing uh, "Set Fire to the Rain." I think that's the one. Yeah, I think that's the song. Yeah, I, yeah, I, like something, anything that involves a lot of really good vocal performance. I just want a, a Northern Kings fucking cover of. Yeah. I I I I've been I've been pining for a, a new Northern Kings for eleven years. Um. Just because the the project was great, um, I, I don't think it's going to happen too soon with Sonata Arctica coming out with something new. And Nightwish is on the verge of, re- of releasing something new, too. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I, I just... I, I wish they would do something something new. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I mean, I... I was so glad you, that we started this segment, because as soon as we started this segment, that, that idea popped in my head. It's like, I want that. Yeah. I want it that way. Um, pun. <laughs> You're welcome. Full Fuck. of them today. Fucking terrible <laughs> human being you are. You know it. <laughs> so here's here's mine. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this this goes two ways, um, and this has to do a little bit with um, what I've been, I've been listening to lately. Now. Um, anybody who has been listening to this podcast knows that I Dad. love um, I love the song "Holding Out for a Hero" by Bonnie Tyler. Okay. Okay. Do you know the song? I probably do. I just don't know it's, it by name. It's the song. It's the song that's played at the end of Short Circuit Two. Oh, I need a hero. I need a hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's a great fucking song. That's a great song. I fucking. It love was just it. recently used in the uh, the trailer for Pikachu. Really. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a great song. I, I fucking love that song with a passion. Um, what I want is like there's I, I'm sure metal versions exist. I'm sure. I know Van Canto has covered it. I wouldn't doubt it. But I'm thinking like who would I want to cover it? Because <laughs> the Northern Kings. <laughs> aside from the Northern Kings. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm going. I'm going two ways with this. One, one can't happen, unfortunately. And I think that the way that Bonnie Tyler sings on the song, Dio could have done it. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Dio could have done an awesome version of that song. Yeah. Uh, like, And again, the song is upbeat enough that you don't have to do that much to make it, make it like, more metal or anything. I just add a couple of distorted guitars and a couple of double bass drum kicks and you're good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's already it's already upbeat enough. It's got it's got a piano to it. Like you can just you can you can synthesize that if you want to, whatever the fuck you want to do. But I think Dio could have pulled that off. No, I'm hearing it, yeah. I could totally hear that. Yeah. But obviously unfortunately that can't happen since since Dio has passed on. So what could potentially happen that I would want? Who could cover it and make it awesome? And I think 
that would be testament. <laughs> yes. Woo. All right. Put a wild chunk, Billy. <laughs> because because testament's already shown that they're good at they're 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 good at doing covers, dragon attack, power slave, yada yada yada. And yada. also, Chuck Billy was on a Michael Jackson cover album that was fantastic. Yeah. So I can I can see again the speed's already there. They're a thrash band. They can they can make it a little bit faster if they want to. But Chuck Billy's voice doing that song. Would be amazing. I think that'd be amazing. I think I think it also would be just a lot of fun for the band to play. Yes. I think they'd have a, a really good time doing that. That 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 would be really fun. I I think I think that that would be awesome. I also like the I I also kind of dig the fact that you you're going you know switching genders a little bit here because it's a female singer to a male singer. Like, what female singer would you like to 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 cover it? If you were to pick one, if you were to pick one, I'm not sure because it's it's. It's kind of hard to to to, to match the the same tone because I, I don't want I don't want an operatic singer doing it. Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, she'd probably knock it out of the park. That that could be, that that could work. She'd rock that shit hard. Yeah, I the, I, I I agree with you on that one. I should definitely be a fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's that's what I was thinking of. I, I was like, one of one of those two would have been great. So, but that's that's a good one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm yeah hell yeah I'm on board with the testament idea though. Yeah. So that's that's it for this week's should I want? Um, <clears throat> always always a fun segment. I, I like that one. I actually like the fact that they put it in the middle because it's, it's an unscripted segment in the middle of our scripted show here. Yeah. I like that. Let's talk about concert news. All right. So first up, we got some festivals. Not Fest has announced the head, uh, has announced the headliner for its first ever event in Mexico City. Is it Slipknot? Well, here's the thing though. This year, Not Fest is joining forces with Force Fest, which is combining these two massive festival brands over one weekend. So, of course, the Not Fest Day will take place on Saturday, November 30th, and be headlined by Slipknot, of course. And then the Force Fest, taking place on Sunday, December 1st, is going to be headlined by Rob Zombie. Really? Yes, sir. That's that's kind of badass. That is a good show. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing what the rest of the lineup is going to be for both days, but it sounds like it's going to be a hell of a show. Yeah, especially if you're going to be headlined by Rob Zombie. Cause normally they kind of throw them in the middle. Somewhere. Yeah. So that that looks pretty badass. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. So let's get on to some regulatory news here. Soulfly has announced the Blood on the Street 2019 U.S. tour. The 22-date trek will kick off on September 3rd in Dallas, Texas, and make stops in Baltimore, Houston, and Albuquerque before concluding in Los Angeles on September 29th. Support on the tour will come from Unearth from September 3rd through September 16th, Insight, Prison, and Arrival of Autumn. Are they coming here? No. no? I was going to say, Soulfly is one of those bands that I, I would I would go see just to say that I saw. Yeah, because I have I have not seen any incarnation of Max Cavallaro live. Yeah. Actually, that might not be true. I might have seen Soulfly. Were they on one of the Ozfest we went to? I can't remember. Um, They might have been on, on the... First one you went to? No, they got, I, definitely I, not ninety nine. No, I didn't go to no, ninety nine. I, I went to two thousand. I, I went to two thousand. Sorry. I, I think I think they were on a year or two before okay. you you went. Yeah. All right. Hashtag No San Antonio Day Black Label Society will embark on a U.S. headlining tour in late summer, early fall. Support on the trek will come from the Black Dahlia Murder and Alien Weaponry. Right on. Um, now, I believe it is. Alien Weaponry that just performed recently, mm-hmm. and they're from um, I think New Zealand. And at their show, it was a festival show. They got the entire audience perform a haka, uh, cel- um, war dance mm-hmm. with them, which is super cool because those things are really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever seen anyone do one. No, it's a lot of stamping and slapping and like yelling and stuff like that. But it's super fucking cool. And when they get like. They got like 6,000 people to do it. It was badass. Nice. I saw a video of it. It was cool. I th- I'm pretty sure it was Alien Weaponry who did that. All right. 
In this moment, we'll embark on the Mother's House of Horror U.S. headlining tour in the fall. Billed as a traveling All Hallows' Eve masquerade, the trek will feature support on select, on select dates by Motionless in White, New Year's Day, Dead, Hell's a Poppin', which is a circus sideshow review, and the rock and roll burlesque troupe Little Miss Nasty. There is a San Antonio date on September 15th at the Aztec. That seems like a lot. Yeah. Cool. Heart will extend their massive Love Alive cross-country summer tour into the fall, with dates now taking the group through October. New dates include stops in Newark, Little Rock, Memphis, Kansas City, St. Paul, and more, with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts joining as very special guests and Lucy Silva's opening. Right on. Guns N' Roses is bringing its outrageously successful Not In This Lifetime tour back to the U.S. this fall, and for the first time in 2019, no dates here. They're playing ACEL, so that's part of it. Uh, Austin, Austin City Limits. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of the tour. Godsmack and Hailstorm will join forces for a month-long U.S. tour in the fall. The trek will kick off on September 20th in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and end on October 18th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, I don't believe there is a San Antonio date. It's not a bad tour. No, it's not. I'd see that. Yeah. Alter Bridge and Skillet will embark on a co-headline tour this fall. The Victorious Sky Trek kicks off on September 22nd in Baltimore and runs through October 25th in Orlando. Dirty, dirty Honey will open uh will also appear there is a san antonio date on october 19th at the vibes event center i found out uh recently what's the deal with rock box vibes music center and whatnot and apparently it's it's the the one venue is three different venues I guess it depends on who's throwing the show. It's, it depends on, who, I guess, who's throwing the show or or who's or where they're playing. I guess, I guess there's different areas of the stage or something like that. Yeah, like there's 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 some sort of difference to it, but the same venue is is pretty much three different things. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I I, I found that out recently. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Guar will embark on a North American headlining tour in the fall. Support on the Use Your Collusion trek will come from Sacred Reich, Toxic Holocaust, and Against the Grain. The tour will kick off September 12th in Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia, and run through November 5th in Indianapolis, Indiana. I don't believe there was a San Antonio date there either. Uh, that's a pretty sweet tour, too. Yes, it is. Sacred Reich and Toxic Holocaust, that's pretty badass right there. Mm. Here's another one. Uh, Agnostic Front will celebrate the 35th anniversary of their iconic debut full-length studio album, Victim in Pain, on a North American tour in late summer and early fall. The 17-date trek will kick off in St. Louis on September 18th and will feature Prong as direct support. Right on. Hashtag no San Antonio date. Obituary will embark a North American headlining tour in the fall. Support on the 24-date trek will come from Aboth, Midnight, and Devil Master. The tour will kick off on September 27th in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and on October 25th in Atlanta, Georgia. I believe there's an Austin date. Right on. Sabaton will embark on the Great Tour in January 2020. The European trek, which will feature support from Apocalyptica and Amaranth, will kick off on January 17th in Zurich, uh, Switzerland, and run through February 17th in Oslo, Norway. Uh, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good tour. Yeah, that's badass right there. Yeah, that's a lot of epic mix right there. But that's it for touring news. Like, as if there was more that we need to talk about. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to one-offs. One-offs. Death Clock will perform at this year's Adult Swim Festival, set to take place November 15th through the 16th at the Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles. The show will mark Death Clock's first live appearance since taking part in the 2014 edition of Festival Supreme in Los Angeles. I had no idea that such a festival existed. Right. I like Adult Swim for this particular reason, that they support heavy metal band just music in general like you know it's a cartoon network but they support really like they I wouldn't say underground but definitely like lesser known bands mm -hmm. 
So, and it's cool that they have their own like flagship to be able yeah. to do that with. Or they, or they have Danzig on their shows. <laughs> Danzig, motherfucker. Or Ted Nugent. Or or Zach Wild. Yeah. That was, that was a great <laughs> episode. That was so so wonderful. All right. Last but not least here for one-offs, Kirk Hammond and Rob Trujillo, along with their good friends uh, Whitfield Crane from Ugly Kid Joe and Joey Castillo of Queens of the Stone Age and Zach Sabbath, will perform at Cosmopolitan, Cosmopolitan Music Hall at Cosmo Music in Richmond Hill, Ontario, eh, Ontario Canada, on July 26th. They will be dubbed The Wedding Band, and they will play classic covers from bands like ACDC, Black Sabbath, Billy Idol, and more. Nice. Yeah. Not bad. Yep. That would be it for touring news or concert news. So now we go on to heavy metal in the charts, which is going to be a downer, I'm sure. Yep. All right. You ready for your top five, boss? I'm ready for my top five. Well, okay. All right. Number one is Madonna. What? Madam X. She has a new album called Madam X. And it's number one. Wow. Number two. Bruce Springsteen. What year is it? <laughs> right? Yeah, come on. Men in Black, Toy Story, yeah. Child's Player in the theaters, Aladdin's in the theaters. Yeah. Paul, he- Paul Heyman and fucking uh, Eric, Eric Bischoff, Bischoff are writing for WWE now. Like, what's going on? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's getting weird now. I'm, I'm getting scared about the timeline. <laughs> Flashpoint. Anyway. Uh, number three is When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go by Billie Eilish. She's still up there. That's pretty, pretty cool, I guess, for her. Uh, number uh, four is The Jonas Brothers, Happiness Begins. I don't know if that's new or not. I'm pretty sure it is. It it's is. Good. It's actually only on the second week on the charts. Yeah. And number five is the new album from Bastille, Doom Days. Mm-hmm. And now we scroll. Those are those are three words that. Uh, sorry, it's four words. That is four words. And those four words that I hate, and now we scroll. Well, we got, interestingly enough, number twelve, is Diamonds, which is the uh, collection by Elton John. Mm. That's probably up on the rise because Rocket Man was in the theaters yes. recently. Uh, I heard it's very good. Mm-hmm. I want to check that out. Right on. Uh, number 18 here is the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. It's up from number 23. Mm-hmm. Not a big surprise here, but we got the Aladdin soundtrack is in the top 20. That's just because Disney musicals do well all the time. Of course. All right. Ooh, new album from Baroness, Gold and Gray, number 39 wow. in the top 200. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Queen's Greatest Hits, the regular one, is at number 50. All right, we got Creed's Clearwater Revival, Greatest Hits, 54. Journey's Greatest Hits at number 66. Yeah. We're getting to the, our normals here, it looks like. I've actually got tired of hearing Journey. How can you? I, I can get tired of Journey, okay? I can, I can, you know what? I can agree with that. Only to like, I love the song "Don't Stop Believing," but I'm kind of tired of it. I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of that I, song. I would much rather listen to anything else. Wheels in the Sky, specifically. Abbey Road is at number eighty-five. Yeah. Like, so I'm still partial to Separate Ways. Separate Ways is another one I really like. I even like Lights. <clears throat> I know it's a cheesy song, but I kind of like it. I, I like the I like, I like Steve Perry's voice in the song, mm. especially in the, like the second verse or the second chorus where there's the harmonies. I really like that. Uh, Rumors is at 105. Oh, oh the Rocket Man soundtrack is at number 112. I mean, you just need the 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 best of. That. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. That's why Diamond is as high as it is. Yeah, I guess people didn't really want to hear, uh, <laughs> what's his name, singing. Did they have Did they have him do the soundtrack? Yeah. Mm. He does all the singing in that. Mm. Cool. It's a, and he's actually pretty damn good. Yeah, I, 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 I saw Sing, so. 
Well, the thing, the thing like I knew he was going to be good cuz um he was the voice of one of the characters in the in the song in the movie, the movie Sing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I saw and, Sing. Yeah. Oh, you saw I thought you said I saw him sing. No, I saw uh, I saw Sing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he did a really good job of I'm still with I'm still standing. So it wasn't a surprise that he was cast yeah. as Elton John. Yeah, we're still scrolling, by the way. Yeah. So we're, that's why we're able to have this this little conversation here. Yeah, we're still... Chili Peppers' greatest hits is at one forty two. We're that low now. Yeah, we are that low. I'm still. What the shit? What? Rhino's choice. This is uh the Dave Matthews Band. Rhino's choice. I don't know. If it's probably new. The, probably the record label. Rhino? I guess maybe. Rhino Records. I guess maybe it's uh it's at one fifty eight. I'm, not, I'm just not. It's probably a, probably a coll- collection. Maybe. Five Finger Death Punch: A Decade of Destruction is at one seventy. Thriller. One seventy six. A re-entry into the charts after not being on the charts last week is Hot Rocks by the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Metallica's Black Album is at one ninety. Uh oh. Yeah. It's falling off. A re-entry, after not being on the chart last week, is Nirvana Unplugged. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. (laughs) Where did that come from? I would expect Nevermind, of course. Yeah, like, that is just, oh, hey, 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 look at this. The last four are re-entries here, okay? Okay. Number 197 is the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack, which I don't know if anyone's listened to it. It's fantastic. Volume 1. Volume 1. Volume 1. 198 is a re-entry. The White Album, The Beatles. Okay. 199 is a re-entry. For the 943rd weeks on the chart, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and number 200 is 50 number ones by George Strait. Oh, uh, fuck George A Strait. Texas deity. Country music can suck my nuts. Texas deity. I'm, 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 I'm whispering while saying this because someone might hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Rock comes through my window. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. Better be, you, better be, you better be careful over there. You watch out. <laughs> All right, ready? Top 25 hard rock albums here. Number 25 is 1X by Three Days Grace. Mm-hmm. Number 24 is Toxicity, System of a Down. Number 3, Self-Titled, Rage Against the Machine. Number 4 is a re-entry, The Best of Nickelback. The Best of Nickelback. I, I like Nickelback. I, so I'm I just saying it's the best. Uh, that, that's arguable. But. <laughs> Number 21 is Disguise by Motionless in White. Number 20 is Meteora by Linkin Park. Number 19 is All the Right Reasons by Nickelback. Number 18 is Zeppelin 4. 17 is Hendrix, Experiencing Hendrix by Jimi Hendrix. 16 is Greatest Hits by Foo Fires. 15 is Hyper Theory, Linkin Park. Number 14, The Greatest Hits by Three Doors Down. Number 13 is a re-entry. I figured out why uh, Three Doors Down is on there. Because they, cause they have another song. The, the the song Here Without You. Oh, yeah. I hate that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that was such a lead-in. <laughs> it, gets, it gets played often enough, and I hate it. Such a lead-in. I love it. I fucking hate that it. was brilliant. Thank you so much. Number 13 is a re entry, by the way. Hysteria by Def Leppard. Shit. Right? Number 12 is Queen's Greatest Hits 1, 2, and 3, the Platinum Collection. Number 11 is The Greatest Hits by Aerosmith. Number 10 is The Greatest Hits by Bon Jovi. Number 9 is The Black Album. Number 8, A Decade of Destruction, Five Finger Death Punch. Number 7 is Mothership, Led Zeppelin. Number six is the Dirt soundtrack. Number five, 
Back in Black, ACDC. Number four, Greatest Hits, Guns N' Roses. Number three, Greatest Hits, Queen. Number two, Golden Grey by Baroness. And number one is the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. Yeah, that's... That's not just not going anywhere. It probably will not. Forever. Forever. I, I'm perfectly okay with, with Queen having three spots on the on the... On the charts. Yeah. Perfectly so, okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Although I think I, I probably messed up going through the top 200 because I mentioned Black the Black album was at 190. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned Five Finger Death Punch, but I did not mention Mothership, The Dirt, Back in Black, or Guns N' Roses' Greatest Hits while we're doing the top 200. Mm. So they had to be in there. I will rectify that next time. Oh, well. Oh, well. There's somewhere in there. There's somewhere in there, and they probably will be there forever. But 943 weeks on the charts. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> 199. 199. Yeah, that's that. That's still like like the longest running. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like I I know I know the Wall outsold it for sure. But I think the longest running as far as on the charts yeah. is still Dark Side. I think there might be there might be a it was a probably a little bit of a resurgence in interest in Pink Floyd only because I think recently very recently David Gilmore <clears throat> auctioned off a lot of his guitars including the very famous Black Strat that he, he I think he recorded almost everything with mm-hmm. and he performed live with and the person who purchased this guitar as a guitar collector probably not even a player but it's Jim Ursay who is the owner of the Indianapolis Colts he paid four million dollars for this guitar. Four million dollars for David Gilmore's classic black strat. Wow. Yeah. So I sure as hell hope that he wasn't just selling this for his own good and he's donating that four million dollars to some kind of fucking charity. Yeah. I was gonna say, I was like, dude, you're you're up there, you don't necessarily need the money you're also part of pink floyd you don't need the money yeah for real <laughs> 943 weeks you don't need the money as a matter of fact i think anyone who says the word money owes you a nickel every <laughs> time money, that money. means in the last three minutes we owe you 50 cents money <laughs> 55 <laughs> We have no discussion for this week, so we're going to close it there. Uh, and Warrior needs food, actually, and and so does... And a nap. And I, 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 I'm I, a puppy. I'll make myself an elf, so elf needs food badly, too. <laughs> that works. I like the at that time, Mac. That works. Uh, I think of Gauntlet, so I think of how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So... Until next time, I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. And we are the Slime.